Put your hands in. KRS. We're here to help you build your butt. One, two, three, go. go. Why aren't you doing it? We're, We're not starting that. Why aren't you doing it? Hey, you know, there's a... Uh, Didn't give me a heads up on the Power Ranger <laughs> intro there. Jesus, dude. I don't know what's going on We here. get a lot of people um, sending us messages and emails on why their butts won't grow, why their glutes don't respond. And they're doing the right exercises. They're deadlifting, they're squatting, they're lunging. Those are the best exercises you could do. But for some reason, they can't. Such a depressing story, man. <laughs> Why won't my butt grow? Well, it's a, it's very, you know I mean? com it's very common though, and most of the time, at least in my experience, it's a connectivity issue. Hundred percent. They just, uh, it just won't fire. Yeah, they're not. They're squatting and deadlifting and everything, but their glutes aren't firing. Right, and quads back, everything else is taking over the movement, and they're not being able to get their butt to fire and feel it. And the first indicator normally is you just don't feel it. You know, so you'll do exercises like that and then your quads are really sore, but you don't feel anything in your butt. So that's, that's the easy indicator, but some people will still feel it in there because it's getting connected or it's firing a little bit, but it's not fully connected. No, you're not getting an ideal recruitment pattern. And you know, hip dominant movements like deadlifts and squats are, um, they, they, you should be using a lot of glutes. Right. You should be using a lot of glutes. So and if you're not, then there's something we can- So we since can this on. is so common, I think it would be great uh, and we'll talk a lot about this on the show, but we haven't really had a chance to demo some of the things like, when you get a client like this, what are some of your go-to moves? Yeah, what are the first to, steps you can take? Yeah, what are some of the go-to? To get that connection. Yeah, let's yeah. show some exercises that you utilize. I'll Absolutely. start because I think that the one I wanna show is probably- it's probably the foundational one. Yes, it's probably yeah. the most fundamental. I, th I would think that the two of you would probably start here too, just to see, because it's the easiest right here. And yeah. we're gonna do a floor bridge, but how you do the floor bridge is so important. Because you gotta remember, if you're having a hard time working your butt, a part of the reason why you're having a hard time is because mechanically you're not connecting, right? Or you're not doing it properly. So the slightest bit of a deviation in like a simple movement like this can make the world of a difference on what, what, uh, what muscles you're filling right. with. So when I get down in the floor bridge, I'm gonna lay all the way down. Now, my knees are bent at about a 45 degree bend. Now, before I do this floor bridge, now the, 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 the purpose of this movement is to, to engage the glutes. We want that to be the primary mover as I come up. Now, here's the problem is so even myself, I have an excessive anterior pelvic tilt. So my hips are rotated. I'm gonna exaggerate so you can really see. So my butt is tilted like this. So it creates you fit, this. You fit his hand all yes, the way can, behind it, his back. And most people are gonna have this, a very, very common deviation. So because of this, I'm already quad and hip flexor dominant. So then when I go to lift up, those muscles have to work too. And for most people, when they do that, those are gonna engage and take over. So just because you're doing a movement, here's where most people mess up, doing a movement that's designed to fire the glutes, there's, you're still dominant right here and this is gonna wanna take over. So before you start, this is what you have to do, this is the key to this, is I'm gonna take that low back and I'm going to press it against the ground. And now I've eliminated that gap. All I've done is I've taken my hips. You tilt those hips. And I've tilted them forward into the neutral position. Now that they're in the neutral position, in order to keep them in that neutral position, my core, my abs are fully engaged. So I can feel them right now tense, holding my pelvis in that position. I have to keep that position, maintain that neutral position in my pelvis as I lift up. And now as I lift And you're doing up, that by driving the heels. Now. I'm driving yeah. through my heels, I'm squeezing my glutes, and my abs are tight to keep me from arching. So naturally, if I come up without thinking about it, so here's, with, here's the wrong way to do this. I come up with the arch already, then my, my body, and it looks like the same movement, but what's happening is I'm actually arching the back to get the pelvis up in the air, and I'm not keeping it in that neutral position first. So I need to rotate those hips first, then I drive and up. You really want to concentrate and make sure that uh, like you're going to hold at the top like when you're first starting because the connectivity is really what you're That's seeking. That's what you're trying this. to do. This, this, this exercise itself is not like a massive right. glute He's builder. He's not just repping this up there, No, there's, there's versions of this you can do where you can add weight and stuff, but what we're trying to do is turn the glutes on because once you can turn them on, then when you go squat, you're going to feel the glutes more. Well, Absolutely. and you'll see between each rep, I'll even reset. So I'll, before I start, between each rep, Press the low back flat, abs are engaged, drive off the heels, squeeze the butt at the top, slowly come back down, reset again. That, naturally that arch is gonna come right back. I gotta press that arch back down, and then go again, concentrate on squeezing that butt as you come up. Squeezing the, those butt cheeks. A lot of I mean? emphasis on the mechanics mm -hmm. and how you move 
aside from just the exercise. I think this is probably one of my biggest pet peeves is I see trainers teach movements like this without really focusing on the purpose of the movement. They've maybe read somewhere in one of their manuals or been told by some guru that, hey, hip thrusts are the king of all exercises for building your butt. Well, mm -hmm. it is if you're firing the butt, it's a great movement, but if you're not actually firing the glutes and that's your problem, then you coming in here and doing that, you're really not improving the, the real issue unless you're really focusing on the mechanics mm -hmm. of the exercise. Now, my, a mo another movement that I like to use, very basic in the way it looks, um, it does require some hip involvement, so the glutes do tend to fire quite a bit with this exercise, but it also works the hamstrings. You want to keep in mind hamstrings and glutes are good partners. Yeah. Uh, they both um, they extend you at the other. hips. Uh, so if you can get one to fire, you typically will get the other one to fire well as well. And you'll see people with poor glute activation tend to also have poor hamstring activation. Not always, but, but a lot of the times you do. And again, you're working on the hip hinging component of yes. this right now. Yeah, so, so it's a, just a single leg toe touch. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna balance on one leg, I'm gonna bend my knee a little bit, and you're just gonna bend over by shifting the hips back, touch your foot, and come up nice and tall. That's it, and then repeat. So you can do reps doing this movement and come up and squeeze the glutes at the top and come down. It's a very basic movement. You're gonna feel the hamstrings working, but you're also gonna get the glutes to work as well. If you do these wrong, you're, it'll look a lot like this, mm -hmm. okay? You wanna be able to shift those hips back. Well, I was just gonna say, this is where the, em the emphasis is on the sliding of the hips yeah. forward and back. Yeah, you don't wanna just bend yeah, you, over, you wanna shift, you wanna, you wanna let, the, let the hips back. go back and then touch your foot, and you're gonna end yeah. up squatting just a little bit on the way down. Disperse your force back uh, a little It bit also more works a lot on balance, and the hips and the glutes are evolved quite a bit in that hip stability. So believe it or not, trying to balance here for long periods of time, you'll start to feel your butt start to fire as well. Oh, just from stabilizing. That's right. So from there, then we, we talked about two kind of more hip hinging movements to get, get that fired up. Now we take that into more of a squat. Um, but I'm gonna focus and compartmentalize that squat by starting at the bottom of the squat. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna look at this as from a connectivity issue. Am I properly recruiting this type of strength with my muscles to get up from a chair? Mm -hmm. and am I, or am I using momentum to carry me forward? So the, the first component to this is to kind of align your ankles, your knees together. So I'm in a nice upright posture, my seated position. And now I wanna make sure that I'm not forcing my upper body forward. I'm really engaging my whole body by squeezing with tension and driving my feet into the ground. And now I wanna get up out of this by stepping up as upright as I can and then also slowly coming back down. Okay, now here's the important part. And decelerate. Notice how, his, notice how his butt came back and he was touching the bench way back here. What you don't want to do, go ahead and stand up for me, Justin. What you don't want to do is you don't want, the, you don't want to just squat down where the hips don't come back because that's all knee extension Correct. or flexion. So watch, come down without shooting back too far. See, it's the difference between this and step, step back, that. You want to come back and come down real controlled. You don't want to fall on the bench, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So now we increase this by adding one leg. Now this is going to be you know, a lot more challenging, making sure that posture is nice and upright. We then move up, and I'm really forced to engage my glute to even get me up and get those hips to extend. I so. like this one a lot too because uh, you know, both what we were talking about, when you start doing unilateral stuff, you can really start to see a difference in each side. That's true because yes. sometimes you get you're one side of the glute firing You'll get and one shaky. side not firing right. at all. I've seen this it's very common with my basketball players, yep. uh, soccer players, uh, you, these sports where you're planting off of one mm -hmm. side or the other and you tend to have a dominant side. So I'm left-handed, so I'm always going to plant off the right side when I do a layup. That side ends up being a little bit overactive. You definitely notice the difference when I take an athlete like that and have them start doing a single leg movement. There's an imbalance. One side's far more dominant than the other. Now, when that's the case, uh, I always take that person and I start them on the weaker side, the side that's more challenging. So if Justin were to do that and I notice that the right side is really tough for him and the left side he's pretty good at, we're going to start on that right side and we're always going to work there first and then we're going to mirror that on the already dominant side to try and uh, catch him up to where he's even on both sides. Exactly. Now these exercises, the way I use them with clients is I have them do these before doing their squats, just to get the glutes to fire, to get to, to feel them, before doing their lunges, before doing their deadlifts, before doing those big gross motor movements. Uh, they work really well with frequency. Practice them often. Mm -hmm. Get those glutes to fire. You'll find that by focusing on this consistently within a short period of time, you'll start to feel the glutes fire 
and then you can go do your squats and then watch your butt grow. There it is. There you go.